Have you ever felt cornered by someone's aggression? Have you wished for a way to turn the tables without stooping to their level? These experiences can be draining and demoralizing, but what if you had the power to make even the most aggressor regret their actions? Today, we're diving into six powerful verbal techniques that will leave even the most aggressive individuals feeling regretful and reconsidering their approach. These strategies are not about fighting fire with fire, but about mastering the art of psychological diplomacy. We'll explore strategies grounded in psychological insight and practical application. From the power of silence to setting clear boundaries, you'll learn how to handle conflicts with confidence and composure. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped with tools that not only protect your peace but also make aggressors think twice before challenging you again. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel, and make sure not to skip the video this really helps us out. In number 1. The Power of Silence Silence can be a weapon more potent than words when dealing with aggression. This isn't about submission, it's a calculated move, a tactical pause that forces the aggressor to confront their behavior. When you hold your tongue, you aren't surrendering, you're controlling the narrative. Silence speaks volumes, sending a clear message that you refuse to be drawn into their chaotic energy. It's a stance of strength, making the aggressor uncomfortable in their own skin, leaving them to stew in the echoes of their hostility. As Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher, once said, the best answer to anger is silence. This leads us to the psychological impact of silence. Creating a void forces the aggressor to fill it, often leading them to reflect on their aggression. The absence of your response can create an internal dialogue within them, making them acutely aware of their own hostility. This unanticipated gap often leads to self-reflection and can disrupt their aggressive pattern. The discomfort of facing their own behavior without your participation can be the catalyst for a shift in their demeanor. As Seneca, another renowned Stoic, noted, it is a great thing to know the season for speech and the season for silence. Moving to the practical application, learning to use silence effectively involves maintaining eye contact and displaying confident body language. It's about timing and patience. When faced with aggression, remain calm, keep your gaze steady and resist the urge to respond immediately. This controlled silence can speak louder than any words, asserting your strength and composure. By holding your ground, you demonstrate that you are not easily rattled, and your silence becomes a powerful tool for diffusing aggression. This aligns with the stoic principle of maintaining control over one's reactions, as Epictetus teaches, it's not what happens to you but how you react to the matters. Consider the scenarios where silence can be most effective. In workplace confrontations, for example, where a colleague's aggression may be intended to provoke a reaction, silence can disrupt their strategy. By not engaging, you force them to face the futility of their aggression. In personal disputes, silence can create the space needed for more constructive dialogue. When emotions run high, a moment of silence can provide a pause that allows both parties to regroup and reconsider their approach. This echoes the stoic practice of pausing and reflecting before responding, ensuring that actions are guided by reason rather than impulse. Overall, the power of silence lies in its ability to turn the tables on the aggressor, making them uncomfortable and reflective. This technique, when used with confidence and composure, can transform confrontational situations and assert your control over the interaction. By embracing the stoic wisdom of patience and self-control, you can harness the power of silence to maintain your inner peace and influence the behavior of others. Number 2. Echoing their words. Echoing involves repeating the aggressor's words back to them a technique that can make them hear their own aggression, often leading to self-reflection. This isn't about mocking or mimicking, it's a deliberate strategy to hold up a mirror to their behavior. By reflecting their words, you force them to confront the harshness of their tone and the content of their message. This can be particularly powerful because it disrupts their flow, making them pause and reconsider the impact of their words. As Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said, Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. Echoing helps aggressors see their perspective in a new light. This technique fosters self-awareness and can disrupt the aggressor's emotional intensity, 
making them reconsider their words. When they hear their own aggressive language echoed back at them, it can trigger a moment of introspection. They might realize how unreasonable or harsh they sound, which can deflate their aggressive stance. This disruption of their emotional intensity is a powerful way to de-escalate a tense situation. Echoing the lines of the stoic practice of Midfelsons, encouraging both the speaker and the listener to become more aware of their words and actions. As Seneca wisely noted, we suffer more often imagination than in reality. By making them aware of their own words, you bring them back to reality. To use this technique effectively, calmly and clearly repeat key phrases. It's crucial to avoid sarcasm and focus on mirroring their words accurately. Your tone should be neutral, conveying that you are listening and processing what they are saying. For instance, if someone says, you never listen to me, you might respond, will you feel like I never listen to you? This approach shows that you are paying attention and taking their concerns seriously, which can soften their aggressive stance. It's about creating a space where their words can echo back to them without the distortion of conflict. This method is grounded in stoic principles of reason and composure. As Epictetus emphasized, we have to ease in one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Consider scenarios where echoing can be most effective. In customer service, where tempers can flare over misunderstandings or frustrations, echoing can help clarify the customer's concerns and show empathy. For example, if a customer angrily says, This service is terrible, and no one seems to care. You might respond, You're upset because you feel the service has been in a address and your concerns haven't been addressed. This can diffuse the tension and open a path to resolution. In family disputes, where emotions run high and misunderstandings are common, echoing can help each party feel heard and validated. If a family member says, you never take my side, responding with, you feel like I never support you, can lead to a more constructive dialogue. Overall, echoing their words back to them is a powerful way to diffuse aggression and foster self-awareness. This technique, when used with calmness and precision, can transform confrontational situations and encourage more mindful communication. By embracing the stoic wisdom of reflective listening and composure, you can turn his encounters into opportunities for growth and understanding. Number 3. Asking Insightful Questions Asking insightful questions can be a formidable technique to shift the focus and challenge the aggressor's behavior by encouraging them to think rationally. When faced with aggression, the natural reaction might be to defend yourself or to counterattack. However, by asking the right questions, you can diffuse the situation and guide the aggressor toward a more reflective and rational state of mind. This technique isn't about trickery. It's about redirecting the conversation in a way that promotes understanding and introspection. As Stoic philosopher Epictetus emphasized, we have to ease in one mouth so that we can listen twice as we speak. By asking questions, you are listening actively and steering the dialogue towards a more constructive path. Questions can prompt introspection and disrupt the aggressive pattern, leading the aggressor to reconsider their stance. When someone is in the throes of aggression, they are often driven by raw emotion rather than rational thought. Insightful questions can act as a mental jolt, interrupting their emotional escalation and compelling them to pause and think. This can be a powerful way to break the cycle of aggression and introduce a moment of clarity. It aligns with the stoic practice of self-examination, encouraging individuals to reflect on their actions and motivations. As Marcus Aurelius stated, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. By prompting the aggressor to reflect on their thoughts, you can influence their behavior and reduce hostility. To use this technique effectively, craft questions that are open-ended and non-confrontational. Timing's crucial. Ask questions once the initial aggression has subsided slightly, allowing the person to be more receptive. For example, instead of responding to an aggressive statement with defensiveness, try asking, can you help me understand what exactly is bothering you? This type of question is open-ended, inviting the person to explain their feelings and concerns without feeling attacked. Another approach could be, what outcome are you hoping for in this situation? This question encourages the aggressor to articulate their goals and can lead to a more rational discussion about how to achieve them. These questions should be delivered with a calm and composed demeanor, 
reflecting the stoic principle of maintaining control over one's own reactions. Consider scenarios where asking insightful questions can be particularly effective. In heated debates, for instance, where the objective often shifts from finding solutions to winning the argument, asking questions can steer the conversation back to constructive ground. If someone says, your ideas are always wrong, you might respond with, what specific aspects of my ideas do you disagree with and why? And this not only de attention but also encourages a more detailed and rational discussion. In confrontations with superiors, where power dynamics can intensify emotions, asking questions can demonstrate your willingness to understand and collaborate. If a boss says, this report is a disaster, you could respond that can you point out the main issues you see so I can address them effectively. This shows that you are open to feedback and you get to improve, which can mitigate aggression and foster a more productive dialogue. In summary, asking insightful questions is a strategic way to handle aggression by encouraging rational thought and introspection. This technique, grounded in the stoic principles of middenfulsons and reason, can transform confrontational situations into opportunities for understanding and resolution. By approaching aggression with thoughtful questions, you not only protect your own peace but also guide the aggressor towards a more reflective and constructive state of mind. Number 4. Maintaining Calm Assertiveness Calm assertiveness is a powerful technique that involves maintaining your ground without becoming passive or aggressive. It's a balanced approach that can effectively disarm aggression. This method is not about being a doormat or a bulldozer, it's about standing firm with a quiet strength. By projecting calm assertiveness, you show that you are in control of yourself and the situation, refusing to be provoked or intimidated. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus advised, no man is free who is not master of himself. By mastering calm assertiveness, you can navigate confrontations with dignity and poise. Staying calm and assertive demonstrates strength and control, which can deflate an aggressor's attempts to dominate. And when someone tries to provoke you, maintaining your composure sends a clear message that you are unshaken and resolute. This can be incredibly disarming for the aggressor, who often relies on emotional reactions to fuel their aggression. By refusing to react emotionally, you take away their power. This aligns with the stoic practice of remaining steadfast in the face of adversity. As Marcus Aurelius wrote, you have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. By controlling your response you undermine the aggressor's ability to control the situation. Practicing calm assertiveness involves techniques like deep breathing and maintaining a steady tone. When confronted with aggression, your body's natural response might be to tense up or response up or react emotionally. Instead, focus on deep, measured breaths to maintain your calm. Keep your voice steady and your tone neutral. It's crucial to stay focused on your message without getting emotionally entangled. Assertiveness is about clearly and confidently stating your position without resorting to aggression or passivity. For instance, instead of saying, you're wrong, I'm right. Try. I understand your perspective, but here is how I see it. This approach acknowledges the other person's viewpoint while firmly presenting your own. It embodies the stoic principle of responding to challenges with reason rather than emotion. Consider scenarios where calm assertiveness can be particularly effective. In a professional setting, such as a heated meeting or a conflict with a colleague, maintaining calm assertiveness can earn you respect and lead to more productive interactions. If a colleague aggressively criticizes your work, respond with, I you your concerns. Let's discuss how we can address these issues constructively. This not only diffuses the immediate tension, but also shifts the focus towards finding a solution. In personal confrontations, such as disputes with a partner or family member, Calm assertiveness can help you navigate emotionally charged situations without escalating them. If a family member is shouting, you might say, I can see that you're upset. Let's talk about this calmly. This response acknowledges their emotions while setting a boundary for respectful communication. In summary, maintaining calm assertiveness is about standing firm with quiet strength, disarming aggression through control and composure. 
This technique, rooted in the stoic principles of self-mastery and rational response, can transform confrontational situations into opportunities for respectful and productive dialogue. By practicing commissotiveness, you not only protect your own peace but also guide interactions towards positive outcomes. Number 5. The Empathy Approach Empathy involves understanding and addressing the aggressor's underlying emotions, connecting on a human level to reduce hostility. When faced with aggression, it's easy to react defensively or aggressively. However, empathy requires a different approach, one that seeks to understand the emotions driving the aggression. By empathizing, you acknowledge the other person's feelings and provide a pathway to de-escalate the situation. This doesn't mean you agree with their behavior, but it shows that you recognize their humanity. As the Stoic philosopher Seneca said, wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for a kindness. By showing empathy, you can turn an adversarial encounter into a moment of connection. Showing empathy can humanize the interaction, making the aggressor feel understood and less defensive. When people feel understood, their need to defend themselves diminishes. They become more open to dialogue and less likely to continue their aggressive stance. This psychological shift is powerful because it transforms the interaction from a battle of wills to a shared human experience. Empathy breaks down barriers and fosters mutual respect. As Marcus Aurelius observed, reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears. By addressing the underlying emotions, you help the aggressor move past their defensiveness and towards a more rational state of mind. To practice empathy effectively, listen actively and acknowledge the aggressor's feelings without necessarily agreeing with them. This means giving them your full attention, making eye contact, and nodding to show you are engaged. Use sympathetic statements to validate their emotions, such as, I can feel that this situation is really frustrating for you. These statements convey understanding and can significantly reduce hostility. It's important to remain calm and composed, reflecting the stoic ideal of maintaining inner peace in the face of external turmoil. Empathy doesn't require you to compromise your own position, but rather to recognize the other person's emotional state. Consider scenarios where empathy can be particularly transformative. In conflict resolution, empathy can bridge the gap between opposing sides, fostering a spirit of cooperation. For example, in a workplace disagreement, if a colleague is aggressively pushing their point, you might respond with, I understand that you're passionate about this project and want it to succeed. Let's figure out how we can achieve the best outcome together. This approach not only acknowledges their dedication but also opens the door to collaborative problem solving. In negotiations, empathy can turn adversaries into partners. If a counterpart is being aggressive, you might say, I see that you have significant concerns about this agreement. Can you share more about what's worrying you? This invites them to express their fears and objections, creating an opportunity for resolution. In personal relationships, empathy can diffuse emotional confrontations and deepen understanding. If a family member is yelling about feeling unsupported, you could respond with, I hear that you feel like I haven't been there for you. Let's talk about how I can better support you. This not only calms the immediate situation but also strengthens the relationship by addressing underlying issues. Empathy, as a stoic practice, aligns with the principle of treating others with kindness and understanding, recognizing that everyone is fighting their own battles. In summary, the empathy approach involves connecting on a human level to reduce hostility and foster understanding. By showing empathy, you humanize the interaction making the aggressor feel heard and less defensive. This technique, grounded in the stoic principles of compassion and rationality, can transform confrontational situations into opportunities for deeper connection and cooperation. By practicing empathy, you not only diffuse aggression but also cultivate a more harmonious and respectful environment. Number 6. Setting Boundaries and Consequences Clear boundaries and consequences are essential for managing aggressive behavior. They communicate limits and assert control. When dealing with aggression, it's crucial to establish what you will and won't tolerate. Boundaries are not about creating barriers, but about setting clear expectations for acceptable behavior. This technique is rooted in the stoic principle of self-respect and maintaining one's personal integrity. As Epictetus said, Know first who you are and then adorn yourself accordingly. 
by setting boundaries, you define your personal space and ensure that it is respected by others. Boundaries establish what is acceptable and what isn't, making the aggressor aware of the repercussions of their actions. When you clearly communicate your limits, you send a powerful message that you will not be manipulated or mistreated. This awareness can be a deterrent as the aggressor understands that their behavior will have consequences. It's a way of asserting your control of the situation and protecting your well-being. As Seneca noted, no one can bring you peace but yourself. By setting boundaries, you take a proactive step towards maintaining your peace and security. To set boundaries effectively, be explicit about your limits and the consequences of crossing them. It's essential to communicate these clearly and calmly without anger or frustration. For example, if a colleague frequently interrupts you, you might say, I need you to let me finish my points without interruption. If you continue to interrupt, I will step away from this conversation until we can discuss it respectfully. Consistency is key in enforcing these limits. If the boundary is crossed, follow through with the stated consequence. This reinforces your commitment to your boundaries and teaches the aggressor that their actions have tangible outcomes. Consider scenarios where setting boundaries and consequences can be particularly effective. In personal relationships, boundaries are crucial for maintaining mutual respect and emotional health. If a partner frequently raises their voice during disagreements, you could say, I understand that you're upset, but I need us to discuss this calmly. If you continue to yell, I will leave the room until we can talk without shouting. This sets a clear expectation for respectful communication and provides a consequence that protects your emotional well-being. In the workplace, setting boundaries can prevent burnout and foster a more respectful environment. If a manager regularly demands overtime without notice, you might say, I am willing to work extra hours when necessary, but I need at least a day's notice to adjust my schedule. If this isn't possible, I will not be able to stay late. This asserts your need for respect and predictability in your work environment. In summary, setting boundaries and consequences is a powerful technique for managing aggression and maintaining control. By clearly communicating your limits and consistently enforcing them, you assert your self-respect and protect your being. This approach, grounded in the stoic principles of self-awareness and rational action, can transform aggressive encounters into opportunities for establishing mutual respect and understanding. By practicing this technique, you not only manage aggressive behavior but also cultivate a more harmonious and respectful environment. Let's briefly recap the six powerful verbal tricks we've discussed. First, we explored the power of silence, a tactic that involves strategically pausing to force the aggressor to confront their behavior. By maintaining silence, you communicate strength and control, compelling the aggressor to reflect on their actions. Second, we delve into echoing their words. This technique involves repeating the aggressor's words back to them, which can make them hear their own aggression and lead to self-reflection. By mirroring their words, you foster self-awareness and disrupt their emotional intensity. Next, we examine asking insightful questions. By crafting open-ended and non-confrontational questions, you can shift the focus and challenge the aggressor's behavior. This technique prompts introspection and disrupts the aggressive pattern, encouraging rational thought. Then, we discussed maintaining calm assertiveness. This involves standing firm with quiet strength, refusing to become passive or aggressive. Calm assertiveness shows strength and control, which can deflate an aggressor's attempts to dominate. Fifth, we covered the empathy approach. By understanding and addressing the aggressor's underlying emotions, you can reduce hostility and foster mutual respect. Showing empathy humanizes the interaction, making the aggressor feel understood and less defensive. Finally, we explored setting boundaries and consequences. Clear boundaries communicate limits and assert control, while the consequences of crossing them deter aggressive behavior. This technique protects your well-being and fosters a more respectful environment. Now, it's time to take action. These techniques are not just theoretical concepts, they are practical tools that you can apply in your daily interactions. Practice these skills regularly to build your confidence and effectiveness. Remember, each technique is a step towards empowerment and personal growth. You have the power to transform aggressive encounters into opportunities for constructive dialogue and mutual respect. 
As you integrate these techniques into your interactions, you will find yourself handling conflicts with greater confidence and grace. Mastering these verbal strategies will not only make aggressive individuals reconsider their actions but also empower you to navigate future conflicts with poise and control. You are not a passive victim of aggression, you are a stoic warrior equipped with the tools to turn the tide in your favor. So, stand tall and embrace these techniques. Use them to protect your peace and assert your boundaries. Remember, the true power lies within you, and by mastering these strategies, you can create a more respectful and harmonious environment. Keep practicing, stay resilient, and let your inner strength shine through. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel. Your support is invaluable and helps us continue to bring you more content like this. Thank you for watching, and stay strong.